What's going on, everybody? It is segment two. And after the amount of fire that we drop in segment one, I am looking forward to the hate mail and to the comments and questions that are made and said about me. And quite frankly, I'm fine with that. So whatever. Um, there you go. But we came back to talk about something just as exciting, more pertinent to Mike than it is to me. Mm. But Mike, we got Meet Kevin running for governor. Meet Kevin, the original, one of the OGs of real yeah. estate YouTube, right? Yeah. Um, and definitely one of the fastest growing guys in the last few years. So yes. talk to me about what California and you think <laughs> about your potential new governor. Well, first and foremost, um, the first time I heard it, I thought it was a joke, right? <laughs> if you've been following me, Kevin's, you know, tenure, which I have for over, over a couple of years now, he has been known to put stuff out and it's like, oh, just kidding, right? Yeah. You know, kind of clickbaity stuff. But no, it, it really does appear. I've seen him interviewed on CNN and some other things and, and uh, he's really going for it, which I yeah. applaud, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think California uh, has been a one party system for too long. Uh, he is running as a Democrat near as I, near as I know. Uh, but but the thing that really struck me is I was lucky enough to interview him 18 or 24 months ago, really before his YouTube channel blew up. Right. He was actually still talking about um, wedge deals. Right. Yeah. At this time when I interviewed. Right. So this is pre stimulus, pre million subs, pre one point six, what it pre governor. Yep. But what I was, I think, it was in, about, I think it was in 2019. Yeah. Middle, middle end of 2019. Oh, wow. might have been two years. Yeah. So yeah. really what was interesting about the video, because I've. I, I watched it again and actually just released it again this morning. I added a, a two or three minute intro saying, I support this guy, listen to this story. Uh, because his story tar starts as a teenager in high school, which is yeah. why I thought it'd be interesting for your channel, right? Meet Kevin long before he's YouTube Hall of Fame is on the East Coast. His girlfriend's on the West Coast. I think he was in Florida. She's in California. And he moves in with his mm -hmm. girlfriend and his her parents, which yep. is, is different. But really what her parents were thinking, I would imagine, is if this if we don't let this happen, she's going to go to the East Coast and <laughs> yeah. be with him, right? So it's exactly. like, oh, I'd rather have him come here, which is pretty cool. Uh, but in that interview, he, he talks a lot about his now father-in-law at the time, soon to be father-in-law, guns and butter, economic discussion, talks about uh, his clients becoming financially free with real estate. So I'm really glad I released that interview this morning because you really get to see Kevin, early Kevin, right? Yeah. Pre 1.6 million subs, pre $200,000 studio. Yeah. It's just it's it, it's just raw. And I loved everything about that interview because it, as you hear it, you hear about him buying his first house, right? This is now yeah. Kevin who's who's got millions of dollars in real estate, makes millions of bucks on YouTube, working at Jamba Juice, saving $7,000. As a teenager, right? Yeah. Or early 20s. So, I mean, who can't relate to that story, right? None of us can really think about, oh my God, I'm going to be as big as me, Kevin, right? It's just, you, nobody thinks that way. Sure, sure. But everybody can go, hey, I can work at Jamba Juice and save six or $7,000 and, and buy my first home. It was a fixer upper and he got a, I think it was a two or 3K loan. Um, but it, it was such a heartwarming story to go back to and listen. And then how that success led to the next and, you know, say what you want about me, Kevin, uh, but he is a very hard worker. Very. And that's been very clear since he was in high school. He's a very yeah. hard worker. He has goals. He works the system. And um, the other thing I learned in that interview, again, watching again, is he's not afraid of a fight, right? Nope. You remember you remember back in the day when he would take on Grant Cardone all the time. Sure, sure. And he would drop off those red flowers for Christmas and get sued and all of those things. <laughs> Fr frankly... <laughs> Yes. We need we need somebody that's going to kick over the apple cart in California government. It's too comfortable. It's a one party system. Uh, you know, the other side is, you know, an afterthought. And, you know, the guy in charge right now has been there for 17 years. And as a California resident for that entire term, we are not better off. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you just need a drastic change. So I, um, you know, I, anybody who follows me knows that I'm not a big fan of our current governor, uh, but I would love to see uh, me, Kevin, get a chance. It would be, it'd be wild to see what oh might my, happen. Honestly, I would probably start doing real estate in California if you became <laughs> your governor. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, think about some of the stuff. I mean, he's put out a 20 point plan. I have not seen all of it. A couple of them have raised to my radar. How about getting a tax? How about getting an income raise in California? If yeah. you work in California, the first 250,000 bucks, which I don't know what the real number is, but it's probably 98% of Californians don't make that, maybe 97. All of you don't pay state income tax. That's a 13% savings. Yeah. That's Talk like about real us. money. And no, I mean, what happens when that happens, Mike? When you cut taxes that Let me much. Think. Hmm. I wonder what happens. I don't know. <laughs> we call them freedom dollars here, Mike. <laughs> That's right. Go right to the bottom line. Freedom yeah, dollars. And again, yeah. And again, he's, he's talking all the right things, right? What do we have in California that is out of control? And again, our current governor is just sure. a freaking moron is uh, homelessness. Yeah. Right. What is the answer our current governor thinks? He thinks our current governor thinks you can spend $300,000 per homeless person and they're not homeless. There might be a better way than using your tax dollars than, than doing that. In California, we, we have gone through three or four or five significant droughts in my 50 years. And what fixes droughts? Well, you build dams when there are droughts so that you can catch. Because in California, we have enough water. It yes. just comes in odd intervals. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So jackass, instead of sending 600 bucks to everybody and buying votes, why don't you go build some infrastructure so that California could be sustainable longer? You idiot. I mean, as the ninth largest economy in the world. By itself. In the world. Yeah. You clearly have somebody in office that is way underqualified. That's like making him the president of... 95% of the countries in the world. Yeah. He is, That's um, literally what it's like. And it's, and, and through no, nothing that he's done, right. Does Silicon Valley thrive? No, he's anti-Silicon Valley. Right. And do, and does, and do, do people move to San Diego because he's the, because he's the governor. No. Gorgeous weather. You've got the greatest natural resources in the country combined all in one state. And he's found a way to make it an absolute taxation nightmare. Well, he is, he's, so again, I believe the guy at the top deserves the credit, deserves the pain. Uh, California for the first time in a hundred years had population decline. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. all you need to know. And oh, by the way, if you go in and really look at who left, we are losing the 1%. What people don't realize That's is right. the 1%, the right. rich, whatever you want to call them. They pay over 50%, 1% That's pay right. over 50% of the state income tax. And they're like, F you, we go on. Yeah. And more and more businesses are doing it. Palantir left because of taxes. Snowflake just left headquarters now in Montana of all Mont places. Yeah. Oracle. Yeah, Bozeman. HP. Yeah, Oracle left. HP. I mean, it's just, come on, Gavin, you are, you are, Gavin, you are toxic. You are power hungry. You are a bad person. I mean, you slept with your best friend's wife. You just, I mean, that's just a rotten person to do that, right? I mean, it's just crazy stuff. So apparently Mike's as passionate about Gavin Newsom as I'm about realtors, right? Brand new realtors. Right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, nothing said, to, and again, he's a liar. He said, yeah. oh, we're going to ask the state state employees to take a pay cut and I'm going to take it right there with you didn't happen Did, oh, oh by the yeah, way don't go eat, don't go to dinner don't celebrate birthdays oh but it's okay for me to go have a you know a twenty thousand dollar dinner with all my power hungry you know friends and family and not wear masks and sit indoors god that just a just not a good person if you only say what you're gonna do and do what you said you're gonna do you're a pretty good person yeah dude, you know on. pretty good person so he oh. he says stuff to be quoted yeah and then does whatever the hell he wants yeah. He's a quote machine. He's a, he's a pretty boy with a good vocabulary. That's all he is. Well, I think the nice thing is, is that me, Kevin, probably won't make a race of it, but at least get hopefully some of his ideas and thoughts on the agenda so people can start thinking differently. Yeah. I know that in watching CNBC this morning, I've got friends in Jersey and, you know, that governor acts like he's just done such an amazing job. <laughs> And he was on CNBC touting it this morning and he was completely out of his depth because Becky Quick and Joe Kern and both live in Jersey. And Becky Quick was the one answering, asking the questions. And she said, okay, so based on those crazy tax rules, how many of the 1% have you lost? He goes, well, our, our actually our, uh, you know, the number of people coming into New Jersey, we're actually net positive since the pandemic. She goes, uh, for that 
1% for the top earners? And he goes, no, I'm saying across the board. She's like, right, but what about for the top earners? Because she gets it. She knows yeah. she's one of the top earners getting absolutely soaked in New Jersey. They figured that the average person in New Jersey over the course of their life pays $900,000 in taxes to New Jersey. The average person, think about that. Almost a million dollars. And how many people are going to retire with less than that, but the state's getting that? Mm -hmm. For those states that don't have their fiscal house in order, get your act together because people are more mobile now than they ever have been and they're going to start to leave. Yeah. They are going the to thing start that to I, leave. The thing that I really appreciated about me, Kevin, when I got a little diverted because I'm just so anti Gavin, <laughs> sorry, uh, is that he is that hard worker that really cares, yeah. right? It's, um, and that's why I love that story from late 2019, whenever that was recorded, because it, it, it's, it's kind of pre Kevin, Kevin, if you know what it I is, mean. it is, it is, you know, he was still driving around. Uh, he was looking at wedge deals. He was he talking was in a about Prius, right? I, he, was, he was, yeah, I think, I think so. He was driving around on a Prius for the longest time. Yeah. For, now it's a Tesla. I'm sure. Of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> it better be with all that stock he owns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he's a Tesla bull, but yeah. Um, when I think about it, I think about your audience, right? Being kind of the younger generation. Sure. I think most of them know me, Kevin, and, and probably look up to him and yeah. probably think he's old, right? That's the funniest thing to me. Yeah, right? He's 28. They look, right? Yeah. They look at me, Kevin, as being old. And I look yeah. at, I look at me, Kevin, as he's younger than my daughter, which yeah. tells you how, how old I am. <laughs> um, but there's nothing in Meet Kevin's story that you'll hear in that interview I did with him that you shouldn't be impressed by. He did Agreed. it the right way. Agreed. He learned his numbers, he did the work. Uh, he took the risks. Worst case scenario, he said on that first 300K house is if I had to, we'd move back in with her dad, her mom and dad, and and we'd sell it, yep. right? But, but um, and he worked a day job. Nobody gave him anything. I mean, he did this with seven grand from Jamba Juice, for heaven's sakes. It's, yeah. it's just a wonderful story. It is. I completely, completely agree. It's awesome to see people like that, that don't make excuses, that aren't looking for a handout. They make their own destiny. They make it their yeah. own. And he is now in a position where he is making in a month more than he thought he was ever going to make in a career. Oh, I, I bet you he would agree with that. Yeah. What he makes in a month now, what back then I bet he's, I, I, yeah. he's over I mean, a million bucks a month now. Yeah. He's, he's over a million be. dollars a month. It's crazy. And you know, what's really funny though, is, is he didn't realize exactly how bad the problem was until he had nine of these properties in mid different tiers of construction and he's fighting on all nine of them to get done what he wants to get done. And they're dragging their feet and it's not getting mm. done. So he's now experiencing, and that's where people's experiences really come into play. He's now experiencing the slow slog the of government and bureaucracy and red tape and the costs that it adds. If he didn't yeah. have that massive income from YouTube and stocks, he probably wouldn't be so smiley and happy because he's got yeah. nine projects not done that he's working on right now, as far as I know. Yeah, that would be, I mean, again, just think about the things that he would do as 20 point plan. He would oh just, my goodness. He, he would declare states of emergency. I mean, it would be, I, I, I hope he wins. I'll vote yeah. for him because I'm sure. a licensed voter in the state of California. I will vote for him. Um, but even if he doesn't win, I hope enough of his ideas get exactly. picked up by others. Because I think they're awesome, right? Well, I think they're that all pro-growth. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're all pro super pro-growth. Pro yeah, and of course, anything that takes away from Gavin's is a plus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, could, I couldn't leave it in any better a place than that, Mike. So, Mike, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, you can go to your Google search bar and just type in one rental at a time. You should see a book and channel and Instagram and all that stuff. You'll see all sorts of great stuff. And again, I am the Lumberjack Landlord, lumberjacklandlord.com, lumberjacklandlord.com, lumberjacklandlord.com is where you can find me. So Mike, thanks so much for the time. And we are going to go on to our next segment after this, which I'm actually quite excited about. So Yeehaw. people will just have to stay tuned to see what that is. Subscribe, go visit Mike on his channel, One Rental at a Time. Subscribe over there. You won't be sorry for all the amazing content that gets created that you guys will then get exposed to. And yes, exposed is the right word. So <laughs> Mike, thanks so much for the time. We'll see you in segment three. Thanks, buddy. Yep. See you.